hey, I get to work with two biggest bands in the country, so who say it's no to that, right? <laughs> Hi, my name is Raka Zami and I am a music producer, audio engineer and sound designer. So my whole journey like working with music essentially just starts from me like you know picking up the guitar basically. I wanted to record my own songs like I was writing originals and I wanted to uh, record them but I didn't know anybody who owns a studio at that time or I didn't have any connections with anybody to a studio or like you know I knew anybody. So I had my I had a PC which uh, had a sound card that kind of supported recording to like the bare minimum quality possible. And then, um, so I just uh, hooked my guitar in some microphones in there and that was it. And I was like off. And ever since that time, um, up until this point in life, it was kind of like trial and error, like, you know, reading up on articles, like watching videos as much as I could. No formal education whatsoever and everything was kind of like self-taught and like me just rolling through uh, the internet trying to find out as much as information as possible. Downtown colors greet us well Nostalgia's been our friend after I finished my A-levels, there was this company, there's a music management firm called LiveSquare that used to exist. So I worked at LiveSquare as an intern for about one year almost. And during that time is basically where I just started to network with so many people and like, you know, get to know so many musicians. And that's where I got to know John Bahia from. And that's where I also got to know Zubair Bahia from as well. So two key members of Vindalo who would eventually lead me down to working with them as well, right? So, and then like a bunch of other people, uh, there was a uh, Victor Da from Radio Shatin, he's an audio engineer as well, who helped me with so many tips and tricks, you know, down the line and like, you know. He shared a lot of information with me, which kind of like helped me shape my knowledge about audio, I think, in a very different spectrum. A lot of my progress in terms of audio production and sound engineering and stuff like that, yeah, I definitely owe it to Victor by the end of 2015, uh, around December, was when Zubar Bhaya from Indelo called me up just one evening and then randomly asked me like, if I'd be willing to work with them as an, as an audio engineer, as a live audio engineer. And I was like, I am totally down for it because I've always wanted to work with them and Indalo has been one of my favorite bands, like local bands of all time. There's something about them that I felt like, you know, would connect on and like, you know, work on. By the time 2016 came about, around April or May was uh, when Nemesis also approached me. It was actually Dio Bahia who, since he was playing for both Indalo and Nemesis at the time. And uh, he kind of like, you know, messaged me one day and was like, dude, uh, are you free? Like, you know, do you think you'd be interested in like, you know, helping Nemesis out with like, you know, live audio as well? I was like, yeah, like, why not? Like, hey, I get to work with two biggest bands in the country, so who say it's no to that, right? Eventually, yeah, Nemesis happened as well. And I, I just never looked back after that. I think there are not really much to go about on when it comes to like, you know, disadvantages of working with music because other than these few little things. And obviously exposure is important and stuff like that, but then you build exposure, you build reputation over time. I think, and I also look at the disadvantages in a positive light. So there will come a time where I will be, eventually I will be able to secure myself as a safe option. Like a lot of my friends, when I started working as an audio engineer, they start they would ask me that um, what it feels like, you know, to work with two of the biggest bands in the country, Indelo and Nemesis, right? And uh, I would tell them that it is for me, it's normal. Like I am working with humans at the end of the day, so yes, there is a certain sense of uh, responsibility. There is a certain sense of pressure and whatnot. When I walk into onto the console, the sound console, to balance the sound, to help the band get set up. Like, at my fingertips, I have the responsibility not for just myself, not for five or four members on stage, but for hundreds of people that have come there, like gathered there to watch this band play live, right? So I owe, like, I owe every one of them something. Like, you know, I am in control of a 
experience basically understandably like you know when you're working in the whole creative sector you require a lot of support and you require a lot of uh, you know voice of confidence coming from people you care about the most and I have had full support and full confidence from my mother I don't have a father my father passed away in 2009 but my mom has been extremely supportive ever since of like every decision that I've made in my life. So when I started on, when I started doing music and um, when I started to take music professionally, my mom was like, this is your choice and um, this is something that you love doing and I can see that and you know, whatever happens onward is your responsibility. Like, you know, it's any consequences, any like falls, any, positives whatever happens it's gonna be on you so I am just gonna support you regardless of like you know whatever it is that you do but uh, you're the one who's gonna to have to like you know face the consequences whether it's positive or negative down the line so my parents have like been the most supportive parents in the world and aside from working as a audio engineer and a music commercial music producer and composer I do dabble in my own music. I think that's one of the other things that keeps my sanity in check because, you know, I get to vent my creative inspirations and creative ideas onto some, like, you know, onto somewhere, basically. Emerson Snow is basically my solo music project and um, I have two EPs under that uh, project. Firstly, the Foresight EP, which was released in 2015. And secondly, uh, the Northern Tales EP, which was released on 2016. Hopefully this year will be a little more engaging and you know, I'll have a lot more to offer. So stay tuned on the Embers and Snow Facebook page to like keep updated. When it comes to creatives, whether it's music, whether it's um, film or whether it's uh, design or anything, I think you should probably just take every opportunity that you get. Just one opportunity could end up being the difference maker in your life. So don't take any opportunities lightly take them up as much as you can, but do make sure that, you know, they're reasonable opportunities and, you know, the offers that you're getting are reasonable because, you know, you also don't want to cut yourself short. Always know what you're good at, what you're bad at, what your limits are, what your caps capacities are. Like, you know, always try to measure them all the time. Like every project that you finish, like, you know, and before you move on to the next, always measure yourself. Like, you know, where have you come from, you know, the previous project to your next project? try to stay motivated like you know if you're feeling you will feel low you will feel low you'll feel down but try to stay motivated and you know dabble in things that makes you feel happy like you know if you're happy doing this then keep on doing it like you know don't stop don't ever look back